everybody and welcome to Core Stability in June. Super excited to have everyone here today. Uh, we are gonna be doing a really nice uh, stability in working our, kind of our back core, like our stabilizing muscles. So that is our core, but a lot of that is also our hip flexors, like our pelvic floor. So kind of working our pelvic floor to the really low parts, like to the top of our thighs, uh, to up above our belly button. But to start, let's just walk in place a little bit. Um, you can just shake it out um, and uh, just kind of get ready for an awesome class. Just realized I didn't put my yoga mat out, my mat, yoga mat down. <laughs> so we got that down. All right, we're gonna have you stand. I'm gonna have you stand um, feet a little bit. I'll just put them shoulder width apart. And we're just gonna kind of do, if you've done a class with me, this is Stacy. We're going to do some calf raises. Uh, so you can have your hands on your hips. You can have them loose to your sides and you're just going to raise your heels up. And then as you come down, I actually want you to let your heels kind of pound on the ground so that it vibrates through your whole body. So I love to start classes with just waking up our lymphatic system. It's just kind of my, like, I'll call it my signature move. <laughs> And so when I do that, I'm actually shaking my hands out at the same time, using that vibration to just say, all right, I'm awake, I'm alive. My muscles are starting to be engaged. So I've been sitting this morning working on budgets, not that much fun. Uh, and so just kind of waking everything up. And so feel free to shake your hands out when you do that. You can pedal your legs back and forth, but just kind of activating those calves and then letting everything come to the ground, the, sorry, come to the ground and just letting that vibration kind of vibrate through our bodies so we can wake up our lymphatic system. So do that a couple more times. Good. All right, your feet are shoulder width apart. You can keep your toes pointing straight out. You can also externally rotate them to a 45 degree angle if you'd like. We're going to just do some, uh, some basic squats where our, we have a nice high chest. We're sitting back into a chair as low as we can go, and then slowly coming back up. And so if you want to move your legs wider, you can, but we're just going right down into that squat. I have mine a little more narrow today just to kind of work a few different muscles. I like to keep my hands out in front of my body to keep my chest up. We're sitting back, really focusing on even pressure, pushing back through our heels or our whole foot up to standing. Notice if you're leaning more to this left or right, going nice and slow as we just wake up those inner thighs and our glutes. So the closer our feet are together, the more we'll get that inner thigh work as we go down. And three, and two, and one. Good, and go ahead and shake out those legs. All right, we are going to put your feet together so that you're like, it's almost like there's a zipper from your toes all the way up to your inner thighs to your belly button. So feet and legs are together. You're going to point your toes out. So my heels are together, but my, my toes are making a V or my feet are making a V. From here, you're going to engage your core. So tuck that pelvis in. And from here, you're just gonna go, we'll say about six inches down. So you're gonna lower your, your glutes, bend your knees, lower your glutes to about six inches down. So you might feel a little stretch in your bottom of your calves. You're gonna have a nice high chest and you're just gonna um, bounce, you could say. So you're just gonna bounce. So you're gonna uh, extend and bend your knees a little bit as you're breathing, as your core is engaged. And so what we're doing is pulsing. So we're just pulsing up and down about one to two inches and just kind of getting a nice little um, thigh workout or quadricep workout. And as you're pulsing, you're really focusing on just squeezing your glutes up and down. So it's not as much of the knee bend or bending the knees as it is I'm squeezing my glutes up and down, engaging my thighs, my hamstrings and my glutes. For five, four, three, two, one and go ahead and stand up and shake out those legs. Very nice. 
So we're going to spread our feet um, shoulder, shoulder hip width distance, excuse me. You're going to engage that core. My hands are at my sides, just hanging down. And what we're going to do is I want you to, we're going to be like a T-pop. We're going to focus on our pivot point is over our hips. So our, we want our pelvic floor, our abs all to be super stable. And I'm going to take my right hand that's just sitting on my side. I'm going to slide those right fingers as far down my leg as I can towards my toes. But I don't want my chest to lean forward. I don't want it to lean backward. I want my core to be engaged. And I'm going to slide those fingers down all the way to the right, getting a nice stretch in my left side. Come back up to center. Take my left hand, my left, left fingertips, slide them all the way down as far as I can go to my left toes. Come back to center and keep going back and forth getting a nice side crunch and stretch. Again, we're just doing a dynamic warm up, waking up our body, all these muscles we're about to start using. And as we're focusing on this, we don't want our hip like we're not we don't want to throw our hip away from the opposite side that we're bending. We want our pelvic to be really stable. And so I'm really just focusing on crunching my abs down, sliding those fingers down with everything really remaining nice and tight. My core is engaged seeing if I can reach a little bit farther each time. Inhaling to bend, exhaling to extend, focusing on that breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Don't need to go fast. You can go slow, lengthening and strengthening our body. So we're going to go for six, five, four, Three, good, two, and one. And whenever I count today, don't feel like you have to do them to my count. I'm just counting down. Very nice, go ahead and shake it out. We are going to do our, <clears throat> excuse me, standing torso, uh, torso twists. So my feet are a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. I'm gonna bring my arms up into a T at my shoulders. So my wrists, elbows, and shoulders are all in line. My pelvic floor is engaged, tucking that abdomen in like a string from my belly button to my spine. And I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm going to hinge at the hip. So I'm not gonna throw my butt back. I'm gonna hinge at the hip and have my right hand come down and try to touch my left toe. But if it doesn't touch my left toe, that's okay. I'm just gonna twist right hand to left knee, come back to center, left hand to right knee, really focusing on keeping that core engaged, breathing, exhale to bend, or sorry, exhale to, yeah, however, just inhale and exhale, <laughs> but really focusing on breathing. I like to exhale as I go down, inhale, come up, exhale, go down. Focusing on keeping that ab engaged, nice tall chest as we twist. Doing some more oblique work here. Good. And for three and two and one, even out if you need to on either side. Good. So standing in that same position, we're gonna do some hip circles. So your feet are gonna be flan firm, <laughs> wow, planted firmly on the ground and you're just gonna draw some circles with your hips. So don't worry about that core being engaged. So kind of lock those feet in place and really rotate from your pelvic floor, from your tailbone and really focus on just drawing circles. They can be little circles. So not throwing our body back and forth, but can I just rotate from my pelvic floor? Can I just draw little circles with that? Almost like we're hula dancing. And we're gonna go the other way. So go ahead and switch directions. Getting some separation, some nice elongation in that spine. And then we're gonna just draw some figure eights. So go ahead and draw some figure eights with your hips. You can go one way and feel free to go the other. Good. 
In this position, my feet in the same position, take your hands and you can place them on the back of your glutes or your hamstrings. You're going to press your pelvic floor, your pelvis forward, and you're just gonna lean back as comfortable as you are, pointing your chin to the ceiling and just getting a nice stretch. My hands are just gently on my hamstrings. I'm just leaning back as far as I can go. Inhaling, exhaling. Make sure to relax your shoulders so that your shoulders aren't in your ears. Inhaling, exhaling, and slowly come back up to center. All right, go ahead and adjust your feet. We're gonna do a forward fold before we get into some more exercises. And as we do this forward fold, I want you to, as you go down, articulate from your tailbone first, vertebrae by vertebrae, going down into that forward fold. And then as we come up, I want you to tuck your tailbone first and then vertebrae, vertebrae by vertebrae, go up to the top of your spine. So I'll talk you through it, but just really focus on that. So our feet are shoulder width apart. Inhale, bring your hands up over your head. As you exhale, from your tailbone first, slowly articulate your spine down. Breathing, vertebrae by vertebrae, coming down into that forward fold, your hands touching the ground or wherever you need to that's comfortable. Letting your head and shoulders hang. Breathing in, exhaling. Feel free to wiggle your hips back and forth if you feel like you need a little extra stretch. You can lift your right heel up and go ahead and just twist to your left a little bit. Put that right heel down, lift your left heel up, and then go ahead and shift your weight to that right foot and feel how that stretch is a little bit different. Good. Now, as we inhale, you're gonna exhale and slowly come back up, your tailbone tucking underneath first, vertebrae by vertebrae, until you are standing nice and slow. And go ahead and roll your shoulders forward and roll your shoulders backward. Very nice. So this is where we're gonna go to, all, excuse me, all fours doing some um, hip flexor leg work. And so if this is uncomfortable for you, you can do exactly what we're doing on the wall. So if I say all fours for like cat cow, you can just plant your feet as comfortable as you are away from the wall. Uh, so I would probably say like a half a body's length away. Uh, and then you can just place your hands flat on the wall, do the same movements, but using the wall as stability as opposed to the floor. And if you have any questions as we're doing these things, feel free. I'll try to make the accommodations known and say them out loud each time. So we're gonna go on all fours to start or on the wall, whichever you prefer. And the first thing we're do is we are gonna do just some cat cow. <laughs> so just kind of getting that uh, spine a little bit more warmed up for this position. So my wrists, elbows, and shoulders are all in line, getting that shoulder mobility, which is really nice. You're going to drop your belly to cow and you're gonna bring your head back as far as it can go, inhaling, exhaling, really letting that belly drop, inhaling. As you exhale, come into cat, tuck your chin to your chest and re-extend your spine up towards the ceiling. Inhaling, exhaling. Again, really try to extend up, press up to the ceiling, inhaling, exhaling. And slowly come down to cow. We're gonna do that one more time. Inhale, exhale. On this next inhale, exhale to cat, inhale, exhale, tuck your chin, extend your spine up to the ceiling. Very nice. Now, from this position, what I want you to do is I want you to actually lean, uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. From this position, we are gonna start with fire hydrants. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do our right side first. And if you're on the wall, you're going to just have your feet a little bit shoulder width apart or hip width the distance. And you are going to 
bring your knee to the side. So my knee's gonna be, my hip, knee, and ankle are gonna be in a 90 degree angle. And I'm just going to lift that knee up to my side. So that almost like if you're a dog who's about to go to the bathroom on a fire hydrant, you're lifting that leg up, squeezing your glute, and then coming back down to the ground. So these are called fire hydrants. And you can keep doing that. And I'm gonna call out some cues. And so if you um, feel like you're moving too far or too much weight to your other side of your body to the left, I want you to center back on your hands so that you have equal weight on both the left and right hand. Really focusing on keeping that core engaged as you're lifting those hips and really trying to keep everything in a line and alignment. So you, with um, core stability, we really want to focus on our core. So if you need to bring, yep. say that again. Switch legs or we stay on the right? Stay on the right. Okay. And if you're switching legs, that's totally fine. But if we stay on the right for now. And as you're doing that, I know you guys are probably getting tired. If you need to let not bring your leg up as far, that's fine. You just really want to keep that core engaged. And three, two, one, go ahead and put that leg down. Now from here, we're gonna do donkey kicks. And so instead of bringing your knee to the side, you're going to bring your knee back. So almost like you're kicking your heel towards your glute, you're gonna lift that knee back and up, really keeping that knee bent and that heel bent, almost like you're trying to do a butt kick. So you're bringing that knee back out. Again, focusing on keeping your core engaged, squeezing your glute, if you really want to add a challenge, pretend like you have a, we'll say just like a tennis ball between your knee and your thigh, and you're just squeezing your hamstring as you're bringing your kick back. So kicking back, and we're still just on our right side. You're doing great. Keeping our core engaged and our balance for six. Five, four, three, two, great job, and one. Go ahead and put that right leg down. And so we're gonna use that right leg one final time, I mean, for this exercise. <laughs> and this time we're going to extend our right leg out. So instead of bent to the side for our fire hydrant or bent to the back for donkey kicks, we are going to just do a leg lift. So you're gonna lift your leg out, extend it so that your leg and your toe is pointed, a nice squeeze in that glute. So as far or as high as you can go without keeping, without falling and keeping a nice stable core, come in, bring that knee to your chest and then kick it back out and extend the leg. So this is a, a bridge version of Jane Fonda's. So leg lifts, Nice kicks, squeezing the glutes, really getting this right leg some really nice work. But when you're pumping that knee to the chest, you're getting a nice lower core engagement as well. Breathing in, exhaling, keep going for five, for four, three, two, and one. Awesome job. Go ahead and shake out that leg, stretch it out if you need to. Awesome job. And you can also just give your wrists a break for a second too, excuse me, I meant to say that. So if you just need to come off those wrists, go ahead. We are gonna do the same things on our left leg in just a second, but my wrists also get tired too. So I'm just doing little wrist circles right now. So left leg, we're gonna start with our fire hydrant. So if you can get back into position. Oh, good, and make sure we're breathing the whole time. So my core is engaged. I haven't started lifting my left leg yet. I'm gonna lift that left knee to the side and we're gonna start with fire hydrants. Go ahead and start. You might find that this height is easier. You might find that it's harder, but breathing, inhaling and exhaling making sure that as you bring that leg up, your whole body is um, as stable as it can be, keeping that core engaged. 
It's not about how high you go, it's about how stable you are. So if you need to bring just little lifts, that's okay. Very nice. Keep going for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and shake that out, that leg out. We are gonna go right into donkey kicks. So this is where our knee is still bent as we're kicking back, almost like we're raising our heel to go back and touch our glutes. Inhale as you exhale, begin donkey kick back, really squeezing your glutes. Again, you could pretend that there's a tennis ball that you're trying to crack between your calf and your hamstring, tightening those muscles as your core is engaged. Can you get that kick a little higher? Inhaling, exhaling, keep going. For five, four, three, two, good, and one. Very nice. We're gonna go right into those extended leg lifts. Inhale, exhale, extend your leg out, kick it up, bring it back in, knee to chest, and extend out again. As you're doing this, pay attention to your low back. Is your low back sinking? Is it in line? So you wanna have a nice strong core all the way throughout. So if you need to bring that kick down as you extend, that's fine. I want you to be stable throughout. Listening to your body, breathing. You're doing awesome. For five, four, three, two, and one. Very nice work. Go ahead and get off those wrists. You can sit back in the child's pose if you like, whatever is gonna feel comfortable. Very nice work. Whew. We are going to lay on our bellies. So if you can all just lay on your bellies, if you were standing, I'll give you a minute. So as you're getting down, we're gonna do our Superman series. And so with Supermans, we're going to have our legs <clears throat> extended out. I have my, my toes pointed. So basically my whole legs are extended out. And we're gonna start with our arms um, extended out past our heads as well. And I want you to look at the mat. I don't want you to look up and strain your neck. So it might feel weird as we're doing leg lifts and the arm lifts, but just look down straight into the ground. Can everyone still hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So as we're gonna inhale, as we exhale, lift both legs and arms up, slowly coming down, up and then down. If you wanna challenge yourself, you can keep your arms and legs in the air, not fully relaxing on the ground. As you're doing this, push your pelvis into the floor. So focus on how you're pushing your pelvis into the floor and then where you feel tight. Are you engaging your abs? This is also giving you a shoulder workout. How stable are you? Can you go a little higher? Do you have to go a little bit less to make sure you're keeping good form? So to make sure you don't get that huge seat curve in the back, you're pushing your pelvis into the ground. So really pushing those pelvic floor muscles to the ground as you're going up and coming down. Breathing for five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Good job. This time what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our left arm and our right leg and do the exact same thing, um, but our right arm and left leg are just gonna relax. So left arm, right leg only for three, two, one, inhale, exhale, and go ahead and lifting those up and down. Now, can you go a little bit higher? We're breathing. 
making sure we're squeezing and looking through the floor, not up. Really isolating those two muscle or those two limbs, I guess you'll call it. Can I go a little higher? For three, two, one, and relax. Very nice job. We're gonna take that right arm and that left leg. Inhale, exhale to extend, start lifting right arm and left leg. Really focusing on, can you go a little bit higher? Very nice, keep going. Breathing in, exhaling, squeezing the glutes for three, for two, for one. Very nice. We are gonna do one more uh, Superman variation. And what I want you to do is bend your elbows so that on the ground, your hands are making like goal posts. And so this is where we're gonna bring our elbows back as we lift our abs up and our legs up. We're gonna bring our elbows back and try to like touch our elbows behind our backs. I don't think anyone can do that. I don't know if that's physically possible, but really just squeezing our, sca our scapularis together, or our shoulder blades together to get a nice more um, in-depth shoulder movement. So inhale, as you exhale, lift your legs up, lift your arms up and squeeze your elbows back. Give a nice squeeze and then come back down. Inhale, exhale, come up. And go ahead and do that on your own time. Just keep going up and remembering, driving that pelvis into the floor. And as you're bringing your elbows back, squeezing those shoulder blades together and looking down through the ground, but really squeezing everything together. Good. Make sure you're breathing. Inhale. Exhale for five, for four, for three, two, and one. Very nice. Go ahead and shake out your shoulders. If you'd like, you can push yourself up and go into child's pose. And that's where we have our feet together, our knees out. We use our arms are extended. We use our hands to push our hips back towards our heels and just let your head hang between your arms if you can. You can rest your forehead on the ground if you're able to. Inhale, exhale, really trying to focus on getting a nice shoulder stretch. Good, from this position, I want you to take your right hand and I want you to put it through where your left elbow or left hand and your left knee are. So threading the needle from child's pose position, taking that right arm and just pushing it through that opening on my left side and just kind of getting a nice shoulder stretch. You can kind of lean into your right shoulder that's just on the ground, getting a nice stretch in that shoulder. Inhale. Very nice, go ahead and bring that right hand back and go back into your just typical child's pose. Head hanging down, push those glutes to your heels. Inhale, exhale. Take that left hand and go ahead and thread that needle. Push that hand through where your right arm and right leg are and go ahead and lean some weight on that left shoulder if you can. Getting a nice stretch in that shoulder and our side. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Good, go ahead and bring the hand back. And for our final time, we're gonna go into child's pose again. Let your head hang, shake your head yes, shake your head no, and breathe deeply. Awesome, go ahead and relax. So we're gonna go into planking. So we're gonna do some planking today. And for planking, you can go into a couple different variations. So if you wanna plank from the wall, 
you can do that from your elbows or your hands. If you plank with your um, arms extended, it's gonna be more shoulder work. If you plank from your elbows or for like your, from your forearms, that's gonna be more ab work. So both of them are great exercises. It's just up to you to choose. Now you can plank from your knees if you need to, extending those arms out beyond where your shoulders are, dropping your um, abs down, having really nice engagement, and your knees can be down. You can extend your legs out so that your body is flat as a board, again, from either your arms being extended or on your forearms. And you can do that same thing on the wall. Does anyone have any questions about planks? Okay, you can get in your preferred position. Inhale, exhale to plank. Breathing, making sure that your spine is really long from your tip to your tail. So from your head to your tail, my core is engaged. Maybe you're shaking a little bit, that's okay. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. You're doing great for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Go ahead and get in whatever rest pose that you need. We're gonna do that two more times. And if you like to switch it up, if you just did forearm or you just did your extended arms, you can also switch back and forth, that's up to you. So whatever's most comfortable. All right, get back in that ready position. You're going to inhale. As you exhale, go ahead and lift. Get in that position. Core is engaged. Make sure your head's looking down. Inhale, exhale. Really trying to reach your tailbone towards your heels, not up in the air. A nice flat back. Your not, belly's not sinking too low and your back's not too curved. Do you have equal pressure on your forearms? Do you have equal pressure on your hands? Notice if you're weighing one side to the other. Inhaling, exhaling, you're doing an awesome job. You're doing great. Keep inhaling and exhaling. Focus on engaging that core for five, four, three, two, and one, nice job. We just have one more after this. I got a little head rush there. I have a little sinus headache today. So this might not be my favorite position, but we're doing it. <laughs> Wanted to add some planks in this time. All right, last time we're gonna go for a minute. So go ahead and get in that ready position. If you need to take breaks, you can. Uh, just try to get back up uh, if you can when I start counting down. So for five, or sorry, <laughs> inhale, exhale, and begin. Core is engaged. I'm reaching my body to be long and strong. My back is nice and straight like a board. We're inhaling and exhaling. You're doing awesome. This is the last bit of work on our wrists and our knees or and our forearms. So you're doing awesome. Keep going. Got 30 seconds left. Inhale, exhale. Extend from the tip to the tail. Engage that core. If you're getting tired, really focus on if you're leaning too far to the left or right. Almost there, 15 seconds. You can do it. Inhale, exhale for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Give yourself a round of applause. Shake out your wrists and elbows and your hands. And we are going to move to our backs. So go ahead and comfortably get on your back. You're gonna start with your knees up, so feet flat on the floor. 
knees pointed to the sky. And from here, we're just gonna breathe. So let's just do some reset breaths. Inhale. Nice long exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Great, we're gonna do some bridging. So hip bridges are here. Uh, before we do that, we're just gonna do some pelvic rocks. So I want you just to move that pelvic floor up. So really pulling your pelvis towards your belly button and then pushing your tailbone into the ground. So just back and forth. These are pelvic rocks. So these are the extremes. These aren't our neutral spine. These are just opening up the floor a little bit more. Good. All right, find your neutral spine. So you're not totally sucking your belly in towards your pelvis and you're not pushing your tailbone out. So find that pelvic floor alignment, neutral spine. You can put your hands um, flat on the ground and we're going to start with our hip bridges. So inhale, exhale, push through your heels, lift your hips up towards the sky as you comfortably can, and then come back down. Inhale, exhale up, going at your own pace. And as you reach the top, just making sure we're squeezing those glutes. And again, try to focus on your knees going over your toes. And that might sound weird, but when you're at the top of that hip bridge, try to focus on your knees going over your toes because what happens is we don't lengthen our spine. We start to dip in weird places. So bridging up and down, squeezing for one or two seconds at the top as your shoulder blades drive into the ground. Just getting some nice hip bridge action before we kind of do some lower, longer holds, not lower holds, longer holds. Squeezing our glutes. Are my hips aligned? Are my knees starting to shake? Notice if your knees, hips are in line or if they're kind of wobbling back and forth. If they're wobbling too much, like your knees start to go outside of your hips, I want you just to go a little bit lower. So don't lift as high. For three, two, and one. Very nice. So we're gonna do hip bridge hold. We're gonna hold for five seconds at the top. And then we're slowly gonna articulate our spine down nice and slowly. So as you do these, we're gonna probably do two or three breaths at the top and then come down. When you come down, making sure that we're going nice and slow. So go ahead and situate yourselves. Hands flat on the ground. If you need to adjust your glutes to get closer to your heels, that's fine. Inhale, exhale, hips up. Nice bridge and we're holding. And so as you're holding, you're squeezing those glutes together. My shoulder blades are going into the ground. And again, imagine like you're trying to push your knees over your ankles, extending that lower part of your spine towards your knees and the upper part of your spine towards your shoulders. And we're holding for five, four, three, two, one, and slowly come back down. Very nice. Inhale, exhale, slowly come up and we're holding. My core is engaged. I'm not wobbling back and forth. If I am, I'm gonna come down a little bit lower. My knees, hips, and shoulders are all in line. I'm stable, I'm firm. For five, four, three, two, one. Awesome job. Inhale. Exhale, push those hips up. For five, four, three, two, one. Awesome job. So we're gonna do hip thrusts or hip pulses on this next one. But instead of going all the way up, you're gonna go about halfway. So you're just gonna lift your hips halfway. And then when I say start pulsing, you're going to squeeze your glutes so that your hips go towards the ceiling about one to two inches. Inhale, exhale, come up hip bridge about halfway and start pulsing. So squeeze those glutes together, pulsing those hips towards the ceiling. Good. Really keeping that core engaged. 
we're pulsing for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly come back down. Nice job. We're gonna do that one more time. Inhale, exhale, come about halfway up for five, start pulsing for five, four, squeeze those glutes, three, engage that core, two, and one. Slowly come back down and let's drop those knees to the side. So let's just do a butterfly stretch laying down. Go ahead and drop your knees out away from your body. Your heels go together. Feel like if you wanna bounce your knees up and down to get a little bit deeper of a stretch, feel free to flap your wings. If you need to shake out your hips a little bit, go ahead and wiggle. If you need to extend your legs out, go ahead and do that too. Very nice job on the hip bridge work. We are gonna go into some leg lifts now. And so we're gonna do our right leg first. <laughs> and our first leg lift, I'm gonna keep my left foot firmly planted on the ground with my knee to the sky. And my right leg is just gonna come out and extend out. So my whole right leg is straight, there's no knee bend. And we are going to lift our leg up to 90 degrees. If it can't go quite to 90, that's fine. And then bring it back down. Your heel can tap the ground or it can hover, and you're just gonna go up and down, breathing in and exhaling. Now, as you're just lifting your leg up and down, making sure that your core is engaged, that you're lifting from your hip, not just your leg. So really focusing on where we're lifting from as our core is engaged, as our lower core is engaged, and just lifting up and down as slow or as fast, doesn't have to be super fast. And then really making sure, is my left leg moving a lot? Is my knee stable? Is it really firmly planted like a tree? Or am I wobbling? If you start to wobble, then make your left leg, leg lift a little bit lower. You don't have to go quite as high. So again, these are all markers. What's the rest of our body doing while we're moving for stabilization in different places in our body? For five, you're doing great. Four, three, two, and one, really nice job. Now we're gonna do the same thing again, but we're gonna do it to the side. So right leg, you're gonna move it, we'll say to like, I don't know, a foot to two feet apart, however you're comfortable. And we're gonna be just doing a leg lift. So instead of lifting from like the top part of your hip, you're actually gonna lift from like the inner thigh. So it's a little different. So what I want you to do right now is just extend your leg out to the side and just let it hang on the floor, like just relax it on the floor. So my foot's out to the side, almost like a straddle stretch, but not because I'm not that flexible. <laughs> and you're going to point your toe. And you're going to imagine the inside of your ankle lifting towards the ceiling. And you're just going to go up and down on a leg lift, really focusing on lifting from your inner thigh. And we're just lifting up and down. Again, focusing on, you can rest your foot on the ground if you need to, or just really focus on that inner thigh lift, inhaling and exhaling. If your left knee on the ground is moving a lot, then move your leg in a little bit so it doesn't have to be as far out wide. So really getting a nice inner leg, lower abdominal strength. Um, workout. We're inhaling for five. Well, don't inhale for five, but <laughs> inhale and exhale. Four, three, two, and one. Nice job. Awesome. Go ahead and shake that leg out. That leg is now going to become your stabilizer. So you can put your right foot flat on the floor, knee up to the sky, left leg extended out for those leg lifts. <clears throat> now engage that core and then begin to lift your left leg as high as you need to go. If you can get it to 90, great. But again, this is about stability, making sure that you feel like your whole body is like just super tight and you don't feel like you're wobbling everywhere. So if that means that your leg's only coming up 
a foot or eight inches, that's fine. We're just focusing on keeping everything really nice and tight. And my opposite knee isn't moving everywhere. You can go as slow or as fast as you like. I like to go slower, inhaling, exhaling, really focusing on that stability throughout our body. Good, for five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and shake that leg out. All right, so we are going to then go ahead and put your leg on the ground, that left leg, keep your right leg planted, your foot planted. Move that left leg out to the side as comfortable as you feel. <clears throat> and again, this time you're lifting from your inside of your thigh. So a great way to do that is kind of pretend like your inside of your ankles going up to the ceiling. So my foot's almost turned out. And begin your leg lifts. Inhale, exhale, lifting from that inside of my thigh, that inside of my ankle up towards the sky. And hopefully you guys can feel the difference on how that feels. Really? Oh, working. yeah. <laughs> Good. Inhaling, exhaling. And I move a lot more with this. So my leg lift is much smaller than when it is when I'm just doing that straight on leg lift because my right knee is moving a lot right now. So my leg lift for this one is maybe seven inches. It's very small because I'm just trying to keep all my core stable and trying to make sure that that right hip is also planted in the ground. So if you're starting to curve over to your left side, refocus yourself, keeping that right hip in the ground too, which is why my, my leg lifts a little bit smaller. Also, maybe I'm getting tired. <laughs> four, five, four, three, two, and one. Great job. Bring those feet together. Drop your knees to the side for another butterfly stretch. Very nice. Good. All right, let's put both feet planted firmly on the ground. I want you to take your right leg and just place it if you can, you can also hold it, place it on your left knee. So my right ankle is gonna go on my left knee. We're gonna just do a figure four stretch. So just stretching that right outside hip. And if you want and to challenge yourself where you can, you can place your hand and pull your right knee towards your body, using your left knee to push your ankle towards your body. So just getting a really nice side stretch. And you can use your left leg or not, but just pulling that knee and that ankle towards your body. Go ahead and relax. Both feet are firmly planted on the ground, knees pointed up. Take your left leg, place your left ankle behind your right knee. And I'm just gonna grab my left knee, my left ankle, and pull that towards my body. Getting a nice stretch in your side, obliques, not your obliques, no, the side of your leg. <laughs> Good. All right. What we're gonna do now is, I like to call it abs your choice. So we're gonna do two minutes of just straight abs. So if you want to do regular crunches, you can. If you want to do uh, your legs up and doing crunches, if you want to do sit-ups, anything that's really going to work the front of our abs, we're just going to kind of burn them out. So we did a lot of lower ab work today. I'm going to just do straight up basic crunches. <laughs> um, we also did a lot of oblique work. Um, so any way you like to do abs, you're going to choose that now. We're going to do that for two minutes. Does anyone have any questions? All right, inhale and begin. So really focusing still and keeping that core engaged, really good form, inhaling and exhaling as you choose your abs your way. It's like a sandwich, but it's abs. It's an ab sandwich. Oh, I make myself laugh. <laughs> it's okay, you guys can think that I'm not that funny. I think I'm funny sometimes. You have one minute and 30 seconds left of abs your way. So straight two minute abs, 
to fin out, finish out this awesome core stability workout, just to make sure that when we're leaving, we're maybe a little bit sore in those abs. All right, you got one minute left, one full minute left. If you wanna switch your exercise, you can. You're doing great. 30 seconds. Keep breathing. You can do anything for 30 seconds. Keep going. 15 seconds, you're almost there. Push through. Can you crunch a little bit more? Can you engage that ab a little bit more? For 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Awesome job. Go ahead and lay on your belly if you'd like to just roll over on your belly and then do that cobra pose. Have your thumbs and your armpits planted on the ground. Keep your elbows tucked in. Push your head to the sky, looking back, getting a nice stretch in your abdominals. Push that pelvis to the ground as you reach your head back, stretching your abs. Inhaling, exhaling, good, very nice. And from here, let's again, spread our knees wide, feet together and push our hips back to end in child's pose. Getting one last stretch in between those shoulders. Let that head come down between your shoulders and your arms, inhaling, exhaling, push all that air out. Inhaling, and exhaling, slowly come back up to standing. You're gonna end my favorite way with a forward fold. We're gonna call it a forward dive today. So feet shoulder width apart, you're gonna inhale. As you exhale, bring your hands up over your head and then throw your hands forward into a dive position towards your feet and go ahead and hang there. See if you can um, go a little bit lower or do you feel more stretched out now that that class is done? Shake your head yes, shake your head no, and just let everything hang. Good, inhale. Exhale, slowly come back up. Awesome job. Let's do three claps on three. One, two, three. Awesome job, everybody. Great class. Great. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good stuff. Awesome. Well, you guys have a really great day. Thank you.